This video is gonna give you some tips and tricks onto how to design your tree diagram, both for your polygons project and also later for your quadrilaterals project. First, let's talk about tree diagrams as far as a big picture sort of idea. In tree diagrams, usually what happens is we have one really overarching topic. Like let's say we're talking about desserts. So desserts is our really broad topic. And then I'm thinking about kinds of desserts that I could have in my house. Let's say I have cake, I have cookies, and I have ice cream. Notice that I'm starting with a broad topic and I'm starting to get more specific the further I go down on the tree diagram. Okay, so now I'm thinking about what kinds of cake I have. I only really have one kind of cake at my house and that is chocolate cake, cause duh, it's the best. And then I'm thinking about the cookies that I have, and I'm thinking about I have two different types of, types of cookies at my house. I have peanut butter, I'm gonna just say PB, and I have chocolate chip. And then I'm thinking about ice cream. Um, let's say that I have two flavors. I have vanilla and I have chocolate. I'm just abbreviating here because you're getting the picture. Okay, I could keep going even further. I'm thinking about um, the chocolate chip cookies I have. I actually have two kinds of chocolate chip cookies. I have um, ones with no nuts and I have chocolate chip cookies with pecans. Here's where people get confused with tree diagrams and especially when we start thinking about them in re reference to your polygons and your quadrilaterals. I want you to think about the stuff down here at the bottom is the most specific. So really when I'm thinking about um, desserts that are cookies, that are chocolate chip, that are pecans, this is the very bottom of my chart, okay? So I'm going from really broad to specific. Also notice that desserts is kind of the overarching category. In other words, if I'm thinking about um, chocolate ice cream, chocolate ice cream is still a dessert. It's underneath that category. Chocolate ice cream is also underneath the ice cream category, if that makes sense. So when you are designing your project for your polygons, I want you to be thinking about what's the shape that sort of, I call it the mama shape, the shape that is above everything, right? And then these are all the babies, so to speak. <laughs> so we have the big overarching idea, and then we have some more specific ideas underneath of it. Then those specific ideas can be broken down into even more specific ideas until we get all the way down to the bottom. Here's the way you might wanna approach thinking through some of your shapes. Let's take, for instance, just hexagons. When I think about hexagon, are, is hexagon a um, more specific part of my shapes or is it gonna be a more broad part? And if you're, if you're like, I don't know, actually, I'm not sure if it's broad or specific, think about are there specific types of hexagons? No, I can only think of really one, unless I guess you wanna say regular hexagons and irregular hexagons, right? But uh, that now think about triangles. Triangles, is that a broad category or a specific category? Well, think about, are there different kinds of triangles that would be underneath, if I'm thinking of just triangles as a topic here, well, what kind of triangles could I have? Well, I could have equilateral triangles. I could have an obtuse triangle. I could have an acute triangle, right? We have all different ways that we can classify triangles and different names that I can name those triangles. So that would be a shape that would have some stuff underneath of it. You're gonna wanna think about each of those individually and then think, do they all uh, come together in any kind of way? Are triangles and hexagons related? And if so, how would that be? Things like that. Hopefully this video helps you get some ideas on how you can design your tree diagrams with our topics in geometry.